All right, you guys, I am so, so, so excited right now. We have such an incredible guest, Victoria Alario. Welcome to Seeing Other People. Hi, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I am so excited to have you. I feel like there is so much. First of all, okay, you guys, Victoria is the host of For the Girls podcast. She is a confidence coach. She is a content creator. She is just incredible. And everybody needs to like pause this episode right now. Go and listen to For the Girls. Maybe if you want to listen to our episode of For the Girls, absolutely. <laughs> but also like just go binge For the Girls and then come back and listen to this. It's seriously <laughs> so amazing. And I am such a big fan of the content that you put out there and just everything you say, I'm, I find myself like nodding along. So it's an honor to have you. Oh my God. First of all, I'm honored. That was so sweet. Thank you so much. And yes, like she just said, we have an episode out already together on my page where I interviewed Alana. So you definitely want to hear that one. Yeah. So tell everybody on seeing other people who you are beyond just being the host of For the Girls and a confidence coach, but also Talk about that because what does that mean? <laughs> yes. Well, you know, confidence coaching, I think was like not, I, I personally never really heard of it, but I've heard of everybody, you know, coaches doing all different types of things. And so I really got my start because I was doing business coaching. So I started doing that since 2018. I mean, I started doing social media content since I was in college. So 2015. So I've been in like the social media space for quite a while, really like focus on like the fashion and the beauty. And then like I said, I was doing business coaching and I had worked with hundreds, I mean, thousands of girls, literally like all across social media. And then I, I what I really noticed was that no matter what I was coaching in business, whether it was like, you know, building an audience or creating better content or selling a product, like no matter what the topic was on that I was talking about, my forefront of everything was always about confidence because confidence is that that's it for everything ever. You can do just about anything that you really want to do with confidence. So I feel like that was always the underlying answer to every single question I was ever asked. And so it really turned into me focusing more on that aspect. And that was when For the Girls came out, which was 2021. And I really started to like pivot into focusing less on business and more on just like personal development and self-love and confidence and, you know, self-esteem and all that. And then from For the Girls, it turned into people asking me to give them advice on their own situations. And so that's when I started offering private calls for coaching, you, you know, for confidence coaching and just like advice and whatnot in really helping women like take their power back and build their self-esteem and whatnot. And so that was like, everything was a very smooth transition from like the business coaching to talking about confidence to then making it a podcast to then girls reaching out and asking for advice and it turning into confidence coaching. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do all the things. And of course I'm on TikTok giving, you know, advice there on a daily basis. But like I said, I've been in the social media space for a while. So I, 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 I love our, I love our like area of work. I love what we do. And so, yeah, but me as a person, I, I'm just, I'm just a girl, you know, I'm just a girl. <laughs> That's really it. Just like I'm, I'm, I'm actually like a pretty simple girl. I'm a homebody, very like family oriented girl. And so, yeah, like, I feel like my work stuff is the cool part about me, but I'm also just like, just a girl. <laughs> I feel like in so many ways, we're very similar. And like, we both found what we're doing now, which feels like what we're meant to be doing and feels so right. But we almost like fell into it. Like it wasn't mm -hmm. the plan, but it made sense. And we kept digging further and further into something that we felt brought us joy and fulfillment, but also mm -hmm. helped other people. And now yeah. here we are. It, I mean, that's literally it. I feel like I'm a service based worker. Like that's just what I love to do. I love to help others. I feel like my, my work that I get to do really get to do, it has to, it, it always has been like, it has to feel like it's my soul soul's purpose. Like, I feel like it has to be like what I'm put on this earth to do. Like I worked in fashion previously. I were, I went to college. I got my job in the city. You know, I did all the internships. I was a PR girl, the whole thing. And I was just like, so unfulfilled, not to mention underpaid, but just more yep. mostly unfulfilled. And when it really turned into like me quitting my job and just like betting on myself and focusing on myself, that's when I was like, no, I can really build a career on 
being, you know, of service to others. And I feel like to this day, like I am just a people person. I, I thoroughly enjoy what I do, no matter how many years go by, or even if it feels redundant at certain points, I just feel like my whole career is like, I, my biggest reward is when girls send me a text and say like, I did this or this changed because of the work that we did. Like to me, it's like, impact over income 100% of the way. So yes, I feel very blessed, but really, really very grateful that I get to work with so many people and help so many people. You took the words out of my mouth. Like I, <laughs> I couldn't have articulated that better. Okay. So I'm excited to talk about confidence because that is obviously a huge part of not just dating, but also being in a relationship. And mm -hmm. it's something that I know so many of my listeners struggle with, and I definitely struggled with it. I'm curious do you like is confidence? Can people actually learn how to be confident? Or is confidence something that it's just fake it till you make it? Okay, first of all, fake it till you make it is my least favorite quote on the planet. I always say face it till you make it like not Ooh, fake it till you make it. Love. <laughs> I've never heard that before. And I'm obsessed. <laughs> well, that yeah, that's just to me, I feel like, um, you know, every, everybody sucks at first and everybody, you know, we all go through the growing pains and whatnot. And I think that authenticity and that realness is how you really get the most desired result. For me with confidence, my go-to saying, if you listen to For the Girls, if you follow me on social media, my tried and true saying for years and years and years is that confidence is a byproduct of action, which means you don't get confident and then take action, you take action and then you get confident. So you go through the trial and error, you take the messy action, you fuck up every now and then, but doing that once, twice, three times, four times, then you become an expert in certain things. Then you become at least more comfortable. You become at least more used to it. So that's why I say face it till you make it because it's like, you know, we all have to start somewhere. We all have to go on. We all have to be awkward on the first couple dates that we go on. We all have to, you know, really learn ourselves, but we're only going to learn ourselves through experience. Another thing that I say is like your best qualities come from your worst experiences, because it's like, you're not going to really get confident in a situation until you learn from a pretty shitty experience, right? Like, so I think, yes, people can build confidence, the more action that they take. And I also think that confidence is a mindset that you can start to like learn and tap into. First, you want to unlearn all the insecurities that you picked up on over the years. But then as you're working through that, you want to kind of reprogram your brain to what my other saying is, is just, um, I only want what wants me everything I want wants me back. If you don't want me, I don't want you either. Like that's just my my mindset. So rejection doesn't phase me. I'm not bothered by um, if something can't be reciprocated. It's just like, well, then that's not meant for me because everything I want wants me back. And so if you can tap into that mindset, anytime that something doesn't work out with someone, you're like, okay, well, then I don't really want this anyway. This is not meant for me because what I want wants me too. How do you get yourself or how did you personally get yourself to have that mindset in your own dating life? Because I think that's something that everybody wants to feel and wants to believe. But when you meet somebody and you really like them or mm -hmm. you're suddenly obsessing over them or you're just so sick of being single. I like, I know I felt so many times where like, okay, I can tell that they're not into me, but like I can convince them. And I know <laughs> I wasted so much time. Like I begged people to stay and I hated how it felt. It was the worst feeling in the world. But for some reason I felt like, well, if I don't get them, then I'm screwed and I'm going to be alone forever. So how do you work towards that mindset of like, I only want what wants me. And if this doesn't want me back, then it's not meant for me. Well, I think, of course, they say when you know, you know, but I also say when you don't know, you know, and what that means is just like, if there's even that little bit of confusion of like, or, or just that sake of, you know, like you said, having to beg somebody and it's just, it's not certain, it's not sure, it's not secure, it's not, there. there's no safety in that then to me, like, it, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right. And if it's not right, then it isn't right. So if you don't know, and if you're all up in the air, and it's just not like a sure thing, then you know, like, you know, this isn't this isn't the thing. And I always say that my biggest, we actually <laughs> talked a lot about security on the episode where I interviewed Alana. And it's funny, because 
there was just so many like overlaps of things that she said, the things that I've always said too. And I'm like, okay, like a same thing you just said, I'm like nodding along. I'm like, yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. Um, and so we, we have, we share a lot, a lot, a lot of similar takes. And so with that, I always said the two things that would make me in any case, whether it be dating, career, whatever, personal life, professional life, um, I, I need to feel one, that true hundred percent like confidence and security that this is the right thing. And two is that it needs to feel reciprocated so that the amount of effort I put in, I also get back the amount of excitement I have. I also feel back. Like when it comes to dating, if I feel like, or if I felt at the time, like somebody wasn't urgent about me, they weren't excited about me. Then to me, that was a feeling I did not like if I was, especially if I felt like I really liked somebody, if you're like, constantly thinking about this person you constantly you know you're you're urgent about wanting to see them again and then they they just kind of make you feel neutral it's like you say that you went on a first date and you're like okay I really like this person like I'm really eager to see them again but then you don't really hear from them they don't really plan a second date maybe they do but they're just taking their sweet time and it just kind of like makes you feel like not reciprocated you know so in that case I think those are the things that I was able to really tell myself throughout dating, like, it's this or it's something better. So if it's not this, then something better is coming. And I knew it wasn't this because with that confusion and the insecurities and that lack of feeling reciprocated, I was able to tell myself like, well, this is not my, this is not my person. This is not my destiny. This is not my fate. Cause I know damn well, I deserve better than this. So yeah, if it's not, this is something better. So it's definitely not this. So it'll be something better. And I was, I was able to change my mindset around from being like, so upset of being single to being like excited because it's like, I'm that much closer to exactly what I want. Absolutely. Every time it doesn't work out with someone, you're still learning so much along the way Mm -hmm. and you are always getting one step closer to finding Mm -hmm. what is right for you and what feels right. You mentioned something in one of your episodes about paying attention to how you feel about them Mm. versus how they make you feel. And I thought that was so profound because we are so quick to put people on a pedestal and think this guy, this girl, this person is the greatest thing in the world and I need them to be mine. Meanwhile, we could feel like absolute shit and so anxious and on edge all the time. So I feel like that's just so, so important for us to start thinking about and asking ourselves. Oh, a hundred percent. I, I think about, I think back to times where I had felt a certain way about people, men, guys, boys, whatever, based on what surface level things, the way they look, the way they're funny, they're charming. Like, you know, you develop feelings and you start to romanticize people based on things that quite frankly, have nothing to do with you or your relationship with them. It's simply based on things that you could probably find in a million other places, right? There's going to be tons of guys that you're attracted to. There's going to be tons of guys that can make you laugh. There's going to be tons of guys that are sweet and charming and generous and all these things. So you're liking them based on surface level traits. Um, when, like you said, like you're sitting there feeling anxious or you're feeling down or whatnot. So when, when on the, the flip side, it's like, but how do they actually make you feel? Not how do you feel based on the surface? How do they actually make you feel? Well, he bails. He's inconsistent. He can't commit. He won't commit to you. He's not sure. He tells you constantly, I'm too busy to talk. I'm too busy for texts. Uh, you know, he doesn't have, he doesn't make romantic gestures, you know, no matter bit, no matter how big or small he, maybe he's not a gentleman. Maybe he doesn't treat you like a lady, whatever the case might be. Or maybe he just strings you along. You know, he, t- he hits you up on Friday. What are you doing tonight? Like that's kind of the guy. And it doesn't make you feel great. Makes you feel pretty shitty yet you still feel all the ways about this guy because of what? Because of actually what? So if you can reframe your your mind when it comes to that guy that you're obsessing over to saying, instead of liking him based on how I feel about him and and his traits or whatnot, let me start to like him based on how he actually makes me feel. And uh, girls, spoiler alert, it doesn't end up pretty. It does not. It doesn't, but it saves you so much heartache if Mm -hmm. you can figure that out when you're starting to feel achy about something, when you're starting to feel like, 
oh, like this sucks. I feel like I'm waiting around for him or I feel like this always keeps happening. And I keep feeling disappointed. Like I know sometimes it's hard to say I deserve more, but you do deserve more. Like you do, even if you don't fully know your worth yet, even if you're not confident, even if you're worried about starting from square one and getting back out there and you're already five dates in with this person, if they're not treating you in a way that makes you feel secure and safe and comfortable, it's not it. Mm -hmm. It's not it. No, I, I listen, if you could tell yourself it's this or something better, it'll, it'll change your mind completely. You will start to feel so much more optimism when things don't work out. Instead of feeling, like you said, disappointed and let down, it'll turn into like, it's fine because it, there's something so much better on the way. And I also think like girl, when girls are single for a long time, and I found myself doing this at certain points too, when girls are single for a really long time, they give the, the guys that they're saying whatever way too much like way too much credit men are not stupid right men are human beings so he knows that he told you like they'll remind the guy like oh so when are you taking me to that place you told me you were gonna take me to like he knows he told you yeah I'm gonna take you out blah 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 he knows that he has not followed up to do so he knows that he has not formally asked you you know how many times guys are just saying things, you know, whatever, even girls do the same thing. So if a guy tells you like, oh, there's this place I really want to take you, blah, blah, blah. And then you just never hear from him. He never formally asks you. He never makes the plan. He never sets a date. Girls are like, but you know what? He's been so busy. Let me just like remind him. And to me, I always felt like that's not how my love story is supposed to go. So even though there were times definitely in the past where I would, I not that not to say that you can't text them first. I Even with my boyfriend, I never had an issue texting first, but it's more of like the context. It's like, if I ever found myself reminding a guy that like he told me he was going to take me somewhere, that's when I was able yeah. to like give, give myself the reality check of like, okay, he's not, he's not a two-year-old. He knows that he's not doing what he said he was going to do. And I think that's when, integrity became probably the most important trait that I looked for in a guy, you know, when I met my boyfriend, like leading up to meeting my boyfriend. And that was one of the biggest things that I loved about him or liked about him in the early stages was that he just did what he said he was going to do. I didn't have to baby him. I didn't have to remind him. I didn't have to lead him to the water and make a drink. I didn't have to hold his hand. Like if he told me he was going to do something, he just did it. And those are the things that create that security that we talk so much about. And so when, whenever I, I lacked that feeling and I felt like, you know, I had to remind guys or whatever the case, I just started to realize they lack integrity and that's just not what I want in a partner. Yeah. And I really like what you said about like, you weren't afraid to text him first, but you weren't having to remind him of things. Right. And it's not like, I think it, there's a difference between like texting somebody first or texting somebody first every single time yeah. to always make the plan where if you don't text them, you're never going to hear from them. Yeah. And it's, it's noticing the difference and being able to take note of that effort that you're putting in, putting in that's not being reciprocated. Yeah. Like I, I never mind it. Like if I knew somebody liked me for, you know, if I, if I wasn't that delusional, I, I was perfectly fine with texting somebody first because sometimes guys like to feel too, like, you know, you're yeah. thinking of them too. And my boyfriend in the beginning used to say that because I always was like, where's my good morning text? It's already nine 30 in the morning. Like you're not going to tell me that you're still sleeping. And he'd be like, every now and then you could just like say good morning I'm thinking of you and you know then I'm like okay yeah yeah you're right you're right you're right but there are definitely times where like I think because of so much like let down or even just like trauma and PTSD from the past where you feel like I can't like I cannot do that like I can't text them first and and I really I I don't mind that because I don't mind doing that because, it, you know, dating is not about the games. Just be real. Like if you want to talk to somebody, just talk to them. But I was always like, my thing was always set in like, I'm never going to be texting someone to like make plans that they literally told me they were going to make. Like that's where I draw right. the line. Exactly. We want to feel secure. We want to feel like pursued. Like pursued, I want to feel totally. like a lady. I want to feel like you're a, a, my man who's like going to be make romantic gestures. Like I said, no matter how big or small, the romantic gesture could literally be him making dinner reservations. <laughs> like right. I want to feel courted or pursued. 
and that's not asking for too much. That's just no. asking for what you want, yeah. which brings me to a topic I'm really excited to talk about, which is what does safety and comfort and security, what does that look like and feel like in a relationship? Well, of course it could feel and look like so many different things to so many people based on, you know, what that actually means to you. But for me, I think going to exactly what you just said, it means you're, it doesn't mean you're asking for too much. It just means you're asking for you what you want. I was in that, in that position so many times where I had to remind myself, I'm not asking for too much. I'm just asking the wrong person. And it would be based on the response or the reaction or, you know, what I would get from somebody based on just my asking for my needs to be met, no matter how big or small. I could think about a time where I was seeing somebody and I was like excited about a certain thing. And I I had asked them an idea. I was like, will you come with me to do X, Y, and Z? It was definitely inconvenient for them to do so. But I was like, will you come with me to do X, Y, Z? And then we road trip. Um, you come with me. I was the one driving and I was doing it regardless because I had, I had to do it. And so I was like, would you come and just like be with me? And I think we could actually have like so much fun doing it. And I'll never forget how they were like, I'm so confused. Why would I do that? Like I'm already in this area. And I was just like, well, because like (laughs) I have to do it and I would love for you to do it with me. Like it might not be the most convenient thing in the world, but it wasn't a, a, person who was going to need to like take time off of work or anything like that. It was just something that I I honestly got like so excited. I like went to sleep thinking about it like, oh my God, this would be like such so a fun and yeah, it would be such a progressive together. moment for us. Like we would have yeah. great quality time. It would like progress things. And so when I woke up in the morning, I was so excited to like ask them and I thought they were going to be like, I'm so down. And when they were like, why would I like, I'm so confused. Like, why would I do that? Like you already, you know, I'm already over here. I'm like, this is not, you know, if, if that's how I feel, that's what you, how you make me feel in response to me being excited about certain things compared to my boyfriend, the, the, who I'm in a relationship with when like, he knows how much I love Christmas and Christmas in the city. And like, I wanted to do like a little bit of everything. And I'm like, and keep in mind, I was leaving Uh, I was going away for a trip on December 14th. So I wanted to do just about everything you could possibly do in New York City and managed to get it done before I left on the 14th. And I'll never forget like how he came to my house so excited to tell me for like that Saturday before I left the plan that he made. It started from like 11 o'clock in the morning. It went all the way down. We saw the rock cats. It went down to like 10 o'clock at night down to us like okay then after all that we'll get ice cream it was like the whole entire day ice skating rockets we're gonna go to see this we're gonna go to see the tree we're gonna go to do that and I'm like that's exactly the energy like I want someone I wanted someone who never made me feel silly in having my needs met never make me feel like I'm asking for too much or I'm excited about too much. Not only was he willing to organize and make these plans, but he was excited to tell me the plans that he made because he knew that it meant something to me. And when I look at those two situations, like the one I just mentioned and that, I'm like, that is the lack of safety versus the full presence of safety and security. A thousand, a thousand percent. I feel like I had so many similar experiences too, where there were things that I'd really want to do with somebody, or I had an idea and I felt even like afraid to mention the idea to them. Yeah. Like, well, what if they think that's like too aggressive or that like we're not there yet? Or why would I be asking them to do this when now I think it was my fifth date with Jake? We both loved The Bachelor. And so we came up with this idea of let's do like bachelor style dates and write date cards for each other. Oh my God, that is so cute. Literally our like fifth and sixth dates, we did date cards for each other and we planned whole surprise date days. And I didn't, I don't even know whose idea it was. Like it probably was my idea, but like it didn't (laughs) even feel like this thing I was asking him to do because he was just as excited for it. And we still do them now. We did one less than a month ago around the holidays, he planned a holiday date for me that he called it. And I, our anniversary and Valentine's day are in the same week. And so I'm planning one for him. And I, it's like that started so early on where with so many other guys at that point, I'd be afraid to even say like, let's get sushi. Oh, 
<laughs> the amount of times where I have wanted to say to guys that I was seeing, like, let's like stay in and order food and whatnot. And then I just ended up doing it alone because I'm like, fuck it. I don't feel like having my night ruined. Like, I don't feel like being let down. Like, I don't feel like being pissed off. And exactly what you said, like, there's so many times where you're just afraid to mention it because you don't know how they're going to respond. And then you have your partner, like how you have Jake and I have Joe. And it's just like that feeling of I can ask you anything. And it's like the, the limit does not exist. First of all, yeah. I love your whole like bachelorette thing, like ba- bachelor or bachelorette like dates. That is the cutest thing. And I also had to note because I feel like we have so many common things. <laughs> our one year first date anniversary, not like our official anniversary, but like first date anniversary my birthday and Valentine's Day all at the same time. February That's 1st. That's so stressful. That's so much. <laughs> February, and, but it reminded me because you're saying the same yeah. thing, like your anniversary and Valentine's Day. February 1st, I'm actually taking him because like I said, Valentine's Day, birthday, you know, the whole thing coming up. So he took me out. He took me on our first date, February 1st. So I literally, I'm not even kidding, booked the reservation back at the same place weeks and weeks and weeks ago and i'm like i'm taking you to the same place on february 1st we're gonna go like recreate like relive our first date so like same thing like you get excited i get excited he gets excited he gets like you just that that is when you know like this is the one yeah wait treasure that you get to do that we did that so we went to quality eats on the upper east side for our first date and we went back for every anniversary we went back for like any special occasion and we got engaged there and they just closed. Wait, they did? Yeah. Wait, isn't that like an amazing steakhouse? Yes. Wait, so qual- we, we quality just Italian about that. and quality bistro are still open, but quality eats in the West Village and on the Upper East Side closed. Wait, I swear to God, it's on my. We, I have a list of restaurants I want to go to, and I swear to God that quality eats is on there. I, well, I don't know if he knows <laughs> that. You got to cross it off the list. We actually have, we took home our our menu and our receipt from the last time there wait I'm definitely doing that with the receipt we he took me to Nobu yeah. for our first date so we'll be going back to Nobu so I'm nice <laughs> I'm excited. Excited. making the effort oh my God. <laughs> and not to mention the fact that he doesn't even like sushi but he's like what do you like and I was like sushi he's like okay That's so nice <laughs> <laughs> so I I will be doing I like that receipt idea guys I don't no one will be able to see the screen right she just showed me the menu and the receipt. So yeah. th- I'm so che- I'm literally so like, nostalgic and cheesy. Like I have our bottle of tequila from our second date with like the rose he gave me on our fourth date. Oh no, <laughs> I swear to God, we're the same person. I literally have a vase full of all dead roses you from do. all the flowers he gave me. I swear to God. Each. One from each. And then I also started, once my friends started getting married, I would take a rose from any of their bouquets or whatever and dry it out. So I have this giant vase of roses that Jake gave me and then from my friend's weddings. Oh my God. I love, we are like literally (laughs) the same. I also, I have our movie tickets too. So I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to do with with them, but like I need to start collecting more things. I got to get the receipts. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that that was the first receipt that we did, but I I love it. And I'm so glad that we have it. That was from... (laughs) Or last night there. and But Quality Eats is like such a good restaurant. So I'm like actually so shocked. So I know. I'm really upset. But so we made a reservation for Quality Bistro for Valentine's Day instead. Okay. We're just going. I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to have Valentine's Day here uh, because on Valentine's Day is typically like a prefix menu, yeah. I, I'd yeah. say. So I'm going to host it like I'm gonna have him over and I'm gonna cook and all that and then on the weekend we're gonna go out okay to yeah dinner. so February 17th we planned oh my God, February 17th. <laughs> but yeah. real, realistic we did this last year for Valentine's Day we ordered in Sugarfish so maybe we'll do that again that Big is a good idea fans. I love that your boyfriend likes <laughs> sorry fiance likes okay. everything that you like like I don't for Sugarfish Sugarfish is the box of sushi right mm-hmm. yeah he's not down with that sad i'm sorry he's like a shrimp tempura kind of guy i'm like okay "Eh, that works we'll we'll take what we can get we'll take what we can get (laughs) (laughs) okay what were we talking about (laughs) (laughs) safety and security (laughs) well love those those are good qualities those are good things to feel um (laughs) okay when it comes to dating a lot of people are afraid to even put themselves out there because they're afraid of getting rejected Mm -hmm. and we know naturally like rejection is a part of the dating process 
it's a part of life. Like there's not a single successful person out there that hasn't been rejected or told no Mm -hmm. a thousand times. But what I think would be really helpful for the listeners to hear is how to not let someone's disinterest or someone rejecting you shake and shatter your confidence. I, I mean, I actually literally have a podcast episode called disinterest is unattractive. Like I'm not even kidding. To me, I say reframe your mind. Like, I think the episode is actually titled disinterest is unattractive. Don't get sad, get the ick. Like if you mm. can think of yourself as all your best qualities and all the great things about you, then all the end, if you're true to yourself, if you are the most like authentically you person, like you, you show up as your raw real self. And if, if that, if somebody doesn't like you, then what that tells you is simply that you two are just not compatible enough to actually be together. So it doesn't have anything to do with there being something wrong with you. It's like, if you were to go out and fake it and like be something that you're not, and they didn't like that, that's a little bit different. Cause that's when you're able to be like, you know what, maybe I could have done this better. Maybe I could have done that differently. And we've all done that where we've been like trying to tweak certain things about ourselves and then we're not a hundred percent us. And then, you know, so if in that case, then I wouldn't blame you if you sat back and were overthinking things and being like, I shouldn't have said that, or I shouldn't have done that because it just wasn't genuinely you. But if you're genuinely you and someone doesn't like that, literally all it tells you is that you're just not compatible. You know, you're, that's just not the right person for you. There's nothing necessarily wrong with you, but like, there's a pot for every lid. There's somebody for everybody. And so you are not for that person, which means that person is not for you. And so I always say, you know, to give girls like, just like that, uh, you know, unapologetic confidence boost. It's like, that's, then ick, like then ew, if they don't like the genuine real you, the you as your best self and whatnot, then like you shouldn't even, that person is unattractive at that point. Like I'm unattracted to this. And I don't mean physically, it's just like, I'm no longer romantically attracted to you because you don't, if you don't see me for how great I see myself, then that's just that. And I, and I get it. You know, it's so easy to have a confidence like damper and just like rain on your parade if if someone you're excited about doesn't feel the same way about you but I truly just think of it as compatibility being the most like that's the forefront that's the most important thing so you maybe you like them on date one or date two but probably down the line you there you would have not liked them either because something Mm -hmm. would have come up that could just go to show that you guys are not meant for each other you guys are not 100% 100% compatible. And that that's as simple as that. I don't think it, it's a personal thing. I don't think anyone should take it personally when things don't work out. I just think that it's a it's an energetic thing. It's a compatibility thing. That's it. It's just when two people are not meant to be together, they're just not going to be. Yeah. And there's nothing you can do to change that. Like You can't force it. You can't wait around. You can't change who you are what what would be the benefit of changing who you are for somebody else? Because if you, let's say you end up with them, then what, you have to be a different person for the rest of your life? Or you're <laughs> always afraid that, okay, I'm going to like show the real me. And now we're like, we've been together for a year. Now we live together. Now we're married. I'm going to show the real me now because they've been with me long enough. They like me so I can do no harm. Like, no, if you suddenly change your entire personality, they're going to be like, what, who are you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it's actually a scary thing because that really happens yeah. and people will go on the first few dates with somebody, then they end up committing to that person. And then, you know, I, I feel like it starts to like come out around like the three, four month mark. That's usually what they say. They say like the first three months is somebody showing you like their best self and what they want you to see. And then after that is when maybe they become their, their more real self. Not to say that all of a sudden this mask comes off and everybody turns into, I don't know, freaking Dracula, but it's more just like people become more comfortable being themselves around that three month mark is I think usually what they say. So, you know, from like that three to six to nine months, like as you're approaching that year, people just become more comfortable being themselves at that point. And so if you, you know, if you like somebody up front for certain things, or they like you up front for certain things that aren't necessarily true to them, it's going to reveal itself anyway, people's true colors always show. So you, like, like you just said, what do you get out of not being yourself? Nothing, because it's not going to last. It's not sustainable. It's not you're never going to be able to fake who you are as a person. That's why I hate the saying, fake it till you make it. 
I think yeah. just authenticity all the way. Wow. Yeah, I I love. I'm I'm now anti fake it till you make it too. You've convinced <laughs> me. I've I turned to the other side. I'm also I'm usually opposed to encouraging icks and like the and ick list and just seeing something about someone being like ick. But I I think you gave a really good use case for the ick, and I do <laughs> encourage people to turn somebody not being interested in you into an ick. Yeah. And it's not, it's not, listen, I'm not one of those either. Who's like, Oh, Ick, you know, he, his shoe was falling off his foot the wrong way. Like I, I'm not like yeah, that, but yeah. it's like, if you can just tell yourself like, ew, like I, I'm so confident in myself and I'm so sure of myself that if this person doesn't, um, you know, see that in me, then just like, ew, you know, and it's more of just for yourself rather than for them. It's not even about a physical thing. Like I said, it's unattractive, yeah. but I don't mean uh, all of a sudden they are ugly. I just mean like, I'm no totally. longer attracted to this person because I, I, I'm more attracted to myself. <laughs> yeah. Think about it with friendships. Like your friends love you for exactly who you are. And like, you've had other friendships that have come and go, or you've gone out, hung out with somebody once. And then you kind of like, didn't want to see each other again because you didn't click that much, but you never have to beg your friends to like want to be with you or feel like you have to convince them to be your friend. And I think there's so many parallels between friendships and dating and romantic relationships. And like we all would be so much better off if we just approached dating the sim in a similar way that we approach like making friends and growing closer to people. A hundred percent. Okay. So we have some listener questions. The first one says, similar to your dear Victoria, we have, hi, Alana. <laughs> My ex and I broke up over a year ago. After a few months, we became involved in a situationship. Four and a half months ago, they ghosted me. Overall, we were together and involved for three years. Though he ghosted me, we shared a broad but well-connected community. I got the hint after I didn't hear from him for five days. I immediately changed some of my patterns, like not engaging with his social media, not going to locations I normally would because I knew he would be there too. His patterns were inconsistent, watching stories here, not talking there, et cetera. Eventually, we had less contact, but for about two months now, he's been at one of my regular locations on a consistent basis. We don't talk at all. These are public spaces, and we have a lot of the same friends. Do I have the right to ask him to not go to my regular spot? I stopped going to his, and him showing up to mine is causing me anxiety. Oh, part of me wants to just say no, like that you that you can't the other part of me wants to say like, okay, if he is doing it intentionally knowing like this is where you go all the time, like, there's a million more places to go. So just go there. But part of me is like, if that, if it were me, because I've been in that situation where I don't want to see somebody, I think if I'm the one with the issue of seeing that person, then I'm the one who wouldn't go to that place. Because if if he has no problem being around you, then that's probably why he's continuing to go. I mean, you guys share a friend group. So if his friends are going or whatever the case is, maybe not share a friend group, but if you know a bunch of the same people and you go out this bunch of the same people, if he's going to go hang out with the people he knows, that's where they're going on a Friday night. And if he doesn't mind to be around you, then maybe he's just like, why would I sit home? Like, why would I stay home? Why would I go somewhere else if that's where they are? That's what one side of me says. The other side is like, what are his intentions? You know, like, is it a neutral thing? Like you said, like there's lack of contact. It's like, yeah, he watches my story sometimes. But to me, I always say that means absolutely nothing. It just means that they're using social media. Like I watch people's stories all the time and I'm like, oh, whatever, you know. So on that end, then I'm like, I don't know. What are the intentions there? Is he doing it to be spiteful? Is he intentionally being inconsiderate of your feelings? Does he know that he's causing this toward you? Like it doesn't hurt to just communicate and just ask what, what's the deal? What's the goal here? Because I now, I'll, now I don't want to go to my spot. Um, so, you know, you could always just reach out and kind of find out first what the intentions are. Cause in that case, if he has bad intentions, then I would probably be like, well, then maybe just don't, he should yeah. not be showing up. So I'm kind of back and forth, but I think it all depends on what the intentions are. He could either be super neutral and just not care and he's not realizing it, or he's being inconsiderate of her feelings. And that's just a no, no. Yeah, I agree. I imagine I knowing how a guy's brain works, I imagine he's literally not thinking twice not about thinking it. And he's it, like, yeah. Oh, like, yeah, I'm going to this place because our friends are going and oh, she's going there too. Like we're both chill and fine with it. Yeah. So I wonder if, and I, I definitely prefer direct communication, but because it might be 
more painful for you to approach this directly? Like, since you guys do have a lot of friends in common, is there any friend who can be like, oh, like, how is it? You guys like both go to the same spot. Like, is it normal when you're both Mm -hmm. there and kind of just get a read on him being like, oh yeah, you know, I'm hoping to like talk to her or like, it's weird that she's still going there, you know, and just kind of gauge it from that response. But I would also say like, if it's bothering you, just ask your friends to go to a different place. Yeah. Like, your that's friends what, that's would what I not think. be opposed to that. And if they are, then like, that's a different problem. Yeah. Then, then, <laughs> then get some new friends. But I, I, I always say like, if you're the one with the problem, then like, just excuse yourself and go somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. Okay. This next one says, I'm in a pattern I need to break. And I know this. I'm potentially self-sabotaging with the emotionally available men that I'm choosing. I find myself doubling down with affection when a boy starts to pull away. I'm in a deep spiral of pretty girl comparison and jealousy and fear of abandonment. I don't trust people now when they say they have feelings for me, which is making me more avoidant than I've ever been. So cue the question, how do I break this cycle? How do I heal my attachment wounds while honoring my anxiously attached tendencies? How do I trust someone when they say they're excited about me? I'm 30 and would love to find a secure version of myself and eventually a secure version of love, but I'm pretty scared of getting hurt again. I don't want to continue perpetuating this idea that relationships equal rejection and heartbreak. It's just been a while since I've known secure love and it's starting to feel parasitic. Whoa. Okay. That was deep. So... I think for starters, the, let, let's go back to the whole, like, I, I, what was she getting at? That she pushes more when they pull away more? Yeah, I think she's experienced rejection over and over that she, like, is she's grasping trying to prevent on. It. Yeah, she's trying to prevent it when she feels like it's happening. Uh, you can't prevent what's meant to be. Like, you can't prevent what's meant to happen. You have to just, like, let what's meant to happen happen. I, I think if you have the mindset of like believing in divine timing and divine reasoning, then you'll know that things happen when they're supposed to and exactly how they're supposed to, which means that people enter your life when and how they're supposed to and people exit your life when and how they're supposed to. That's my biggest thing when it comes to like all the different like attachment styles and whatnot. I really try to focus more on the divine timing and divine reasoning so that I'm able to tell myself this is this is happening exactly when it's, when and how it's supposed to, which goes back to the whole thing then like how she's saying how do i not to say prevent rejection but how do i like move on from rejection it might sound like so so simple or so cliche but at the end of the day like this is all just part of the process like this is all just part of you getting to that next step to you know meeting the right person and whatnot but i think what she's stressing too much is the end of the like of that process like is the meeting somebody part you have to detach from the outcome you have to detach from like okay at the end of this process i'm going to meet somebody so like i need to just like try to figure out which one is going to be the guy instead i think spend this time during this process letting things unfold how they're supposed to and invest your time into bettering yourself focus on yourself pick up hobbies no matter what it is, you could learn a new language, you could do what I did, which I took up pottery, I loved going to pottery, that was so much fun. Um, Whatever it might be sports, anything, pick up hobbies, invest your time into that and allow your mind to be like open to fun new things that are just you investing in yourself and you bettering yourself. And detach from the outcome of like the whole dating process. That's when people are way too hyper fixated on like, the rejection and things of that sort and tell yourself like everything happens. Like I said, divine reasoning, divine timing, when and how it's supposed to. Yeah, absolutely. And with that, I think it's important to look back at your situations gone wrong and the relationships that ended poorly and the times that you felt abandoned or jealous or rejected. Like look back at those and figure out what can you learn from them? Mm -hmm. Or at what point do you wish you could go back and say, okay, hey, Alana, like, let's leave this situation because I already don't feel good and I have a feeling this isn't going to end well. And if you could even like write down some things that you can now point to in hindsight of like, oh, this was the turning point where I wish I walked away. Or maybe this is something I could have said or a question I could have asked to figure out what they were looking for, what their intentions were. Like, write those down to hold yourself accountable because everything that happens is a part of your journey. And it is getting you a step closer to what you want and to the person that you're going to become. But like I went through absolute hell and back when I was single, 
And I kept repeating those patterns until I took a really deep look at what I was allowing to happen, the behavior I was accepting. And I it really had to say like, okay, I did this. And in the future, I don't want to feel that way. So if I hear somebody say this thing, or if I feel in my gut that this situation is turning into what it was with that guy, like I'm going to cut it off. And mm -hmm. I think that is how you become stronger. That is how you can learn and feel less attached like Victoria said, like to the outcome. Yeah. Yeah. I also, I mean, exactly what you just said with reflecting, I think journaling is so big and not enough people do it. One thing that throughout being single that I always journaled about was not only what I wanted in a partner, but the type of partner I wanted to be. And yeah. there were definitely times where I was not embodying the traits that I had written down. So if I put like, this is, these are like my top, 20 things just making up that number that I want in a man and these are the top 20 things that I want to be for that man and then like you know one thing I would always put is that I, I really wanted to be like really feminine and really kind and just be able to really embody like a softer energy and in dating because I was so often disappointed I think my natural reflex was to like be on the defense mode and I really tended to embody like a very masculine energy and a very just like control freak energy and I felt like if I don't like do it then it's not going to get done like if I don't make it happen then they're not then then it'll never happen the right way like I can only rely on myself that was my mindset a lot of the time I couldn't ask anyone for anything I couldn't rely on anyone for anything like only me 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 and so whenever I would find myself like tapping into those energies I was like okay I'm not being the partner that I want to be I'm not being the version of me that I want to be and I, I was definitely able to pinpoint specific moments where that happened so I think that's a big thing if you could journal like who you want to be and how you want to be in relationships um you'll be able to hold yourself accountable like Alana just said and and pick out like the times where you know maybe not to say necessarily red flags but maybe like your like Again, I don't want to say toxic traits. I don't want to say red flags, but like when you, know, when you feel like yeah. you're not able to be those things. That yeah, you when you're just be. not able to be your best self. There you go. I feel like I'm so used to saying like toxic traits and I, red I flags. found myself <laughs> trying to avoid the term red flag. I was like, look back in hindsight and find <laughs> things that felt off. <laughs> find that thing. <laughs> those things. Yeah, exactly. Well, listen, we all thing. we all have a little bit of yellow flags in us, and we all damn have right little, we do. We all have yep. some traits, you know. Absolutely. Okay. I, oh my God. This has been so fun. I know we could talk for hours and hours, but I have one final question for you. And that is what is the best piece of dating or relationship advice you've ever received or have to give? Ooh, okay. This is going to be like a deep one. Let's hear it. This was actually when I really started to like pick up hobbies. This was when I decided to move back home. I was living in Miami at the time and I decided to move back closer to my family and just like really started to enjoy my life more because there was a point where I was really like, I felt like I was running out of time. Like I was really, mind you, I was 26. Okay. So <laughs> uh, maybe even 25, I might've just turned 26 at that time. Um, and I just, I was getting like really upset and so, so I was working with, with a woman and she said to me, you have to live your life as if like, in the worst case scenario, she's like, I'm not saying this is going to happen to you, but as if you never meet your partner and you, and it gave me a perspective because she was like, you have to live your life, loving your life, no matter what. So what if you never met your soulmate in this lifetime? What if you never got married? What if you never have, like, just what if that never happened for you? Are you going to hate your life for the rest of your life? Like you cannot live your life like that. You cannot live your life always feeling incomplete, always feeling like something is missing. You have to really decide, like I'm going to love my life no matter what. I'm going to love my life single or not. And it, it was a very hard pill to swallow. And I was very emotional being like understanding and grasping that perspective because I was like, no, that will never happen to me. Like, I know that I'm not meant for that. And she's like, no, I'm not saying that you are. But the point is, is that you're getting into a point where you're like hating being single, which means that you're like hating yourself. You're like yeah. hating your life. And if you're living your life, hating your life, you're that much less likely to even meet somebody because you're just unhappy. 
and you have to love yourself, love your life and be content and, and then let everything else like fall in, into place at, as they would. And I think that around that time, I was like, you know what? I'm going to move back by my family because I think that was a big thing. I was like living alone in Miami. I, I had some friends, but not like my people, people. Yeah. And I was like, I think my environment is a big thing here. I need to be surrounded by love more because when you're like feeling the lack of love altogether, then that lack of romantic love makes a big, like it starts to just feel like a big hole. So I was like, I just need to be surrounded by more love, have more fun. Like I said, I started picking up pottery, just like doing things for myself. And it wasn't until after I did all that, literally two years after that, then I met my boyfriend and I met him while being in already like a very happy place. And now I'm just even happier, but I was much better than I was two years prior when I was like hating life. Yeah, I snaps to all of that. I couldn't possibly agree more. You can't put all of your eggs in the boyfriend basket. You can't. No. Like you have to like you, you don't have to love who you are because it's really hard to do, but you have to like who you are and the life that you have. And I think that is that point when most people do end up finding somebody because they're not putting all this pressure on needing someone to complete them. It's just like, oh. I have a great life and all of these things that make me me and that bring me joy. And if I meet someone now, it'd be the cherry on top. Right. Exactly. Listen, yeah. it's perfectly fine to be like, I love my life even more now that I have somebody, totally. but, but it's just not okay to live life. So, so empty and so sad. And like, I know what happens and mental health is a real thing. And it's something that people need to work on, but then do that work on it, you know? Absolutely. And, and I was not, I was like, I hit a low point at that point. Cause I think like, a couple friends maybe got pregnant or engaged and I'm like, fuck my life. Like, you know, and now, and now I have friends in long-term relationships that are like, I guarantee that you uh, get married and have kids before me now. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you're like, you know what? I hope so. <laughs> yeah. oh, I love it. Victoria, <laughs> thank you so, so much for being here. Where can everybody find you? Shout out all the things. Yes. Well, thank you for having me. This was so much fun. I am on Instagram and TikTok. TikTok, Victoria.Alario, A-L-A-R-I-O. My social media handle is the same everywhere. And then For the Girls is my podcast that you can listen anywhere podcasts are streaming. So uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the things. And it's also on Instagram and TikTok as For the Girls dot podcast. So I throw a little dot in there, my personal and my podcast. <laughs> consistency I love it you guys really have to check out for the girls blow that up give her a five-star rating and review everywhere and follow her she's incredible and Victoria this has been so amazing thank you thank you